Good evening, and welcome back to the Masonic Roundtable, a weekly hangout where Masons from around the country get together to talk about Masonic news and opinions in a friendly and social manner. The standard disclaimer applies. The thoughts and opinions expressed here are solely the opinions of the participants and do not represent any Grand Lodge statements or positions. Please make sure you keep your conversations open for the public and on the level. As usual, we are soliciting comments and questions from you via Twitter and Facebook at Mason Roundtable and or with the hashtag TMR Episode 18. That's TMR Episode 18. We'll go around for introductions. My name is John Ruark. I am the past master of the Patriot Lodge number 1957 in Fairfax, Virginia, and I'm currently the chaplain and lodge education officer. With that, I will hand it off to Jason Richards. Thanks, John. My name is Jason Richards. I'm the senior deacon of Acacia Lodge number 16 in Clifton, Virginia, and I'm also a Masonic blogger with the blog The Two-Foot Ruler, Marian Language. Great. Thank you. And Juan. Good evening, gentlemen. My name is Juan Sepúlveda. I am a member of Eola Lodge number 207 in Orlando, Florida, and I blog and podcast at thewindingstairs.com. Great. Brother Nick. Hi, uh, it's uh, Nick Johnson, uh, Corinthian Lodge number 67, past master. You can find my blog at millennialfreemason.com. Excellent. Thank you. And allow me to introduce our special guest for tonight, this is my good friend and brother, <clears throat> uh, Worshipful Master Paul Chamberlain of last year. Uh, he, he doesn't like the whole Worshipful title, and he'll explain why in a minute. Um, and I've known Paul for many years, way before we were both Masons, and just as a little bit of a setup and introduction, Paul and I had talked about, after we became brothers uh, in the fraternity, like how cool would it be, now that we've become fathers, we're young fathers, to have a Masonic Dads podcast that really was a lot of the inspiration of what you're seeing here tonight as a way for you know, two guys, even geographically dispersed, to have a good Masonic discussion about how Masonry applies in the daily life. So without further ado, uh, Worshipful Master uh, Paul Chamberlain, Past Master of Greenleaf Lodge number 561 in the year 2013. Paul Chamberlain. Yeah. You can call me Brother Paul Chamberlain, Brother Paul. Past Master. Uh, <laughs> Uh, John referenced though, and it's in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Uh, for some of our Masons on the East Coast, um, are actually familiar with our temple. Uh, if you're in the York Rite, you've heard of the uh, the operatives. It's a relatively new part of the York Rite, um, and kind of imported from Europe. The first uh, quarry of operatives was actually started in Allentown. Uh, we have an active York Rite and uh, Scottish Rite as well. So I know a lot of uh, Masons in the certainly in the Mid Atlantic are actually familiar with where I'm from. Um, as far as the the worshipful title, it's just confusing to me because uh, in, in the, under the Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania, we don't address anyone as worshipful. The the worshipful master is called worshipful master, but I, as a past master, am just called Paul Brother Paul Chamberlain, past master. So when I see the reference to me being worshipful Paul Chamberlain, it just I'm just my arches my eyebrows a little bit. I don't know what what that means. I, I blame Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania does a lot of things weird, Paul. <laughs> we certainly do. We certainly do. Hey, Paul, make sure you scoot over a little bit so we can see in the video, too. <clears throat> Alrighty. With that, let's jump into Masonic news for this week. Uh, Jason, I, I know that you and I saw the same activity jump up on Chris Hodap's blog. Uh, do you want to mention that while I bring it up? Um, you know, sign off every show saying keep searching for more light. When we say keep searching for more light, we do not mean light yourself on fire while trying to commit arson. <laughs> and apparently that's what some guy did uh, this past week. A uh, gentleman, uh, and using the term loosely, set himself on fire <laughs> accidentally while trying to burn down a lot in Ohio. And uh, it's, it's interesting. I, I'm not sure what it is with people trying to burn down Masonic lodges. Because the same lodge... Uh, um, back in May, and then if you remember on St. Patrick's Day, someone tried to set fire to the Grand Lodge of Massachusetts. Weird. So I, I just don't know why people automatically think, oh, let's just burn down a lodge. Yeah, let, let's mark this. This is the year where everyone tries to set fire to the Masons. It's, it's just phenomenal. <laughs> I don't know why all of a sudden they're coming out of the closets just to just burn things down, but... It, you know, you, you can't win them all. 
Well, you know, I was I was thinking about this uh, this story. I was like, well, you know, it could be a a form of protest. You know, self immolation. It's like I'm going to protest the Masons, so I'm just gonna you know set myself on fire. I don't think that was the intent, but message received. <laughs> on a on a slightly serious note on that though, they you know they caught that guy because they had a, a security system with a camera, and it's just kind of another reminder if you if your lodge can <clears throat> afford it, especially if you have a clearly marked lodge building, uh, a security system's a worthy investment. Completely agree. Yep. Very very true. So I thought that was kind of funny. Uh, it's still early. We still have another half of the year left, so I'm sure we got at least three more fires uh, <laughs> somewhere, somewhere waiting this year. It, it's insane. It really is. I, I don't understand it. It made sense to those people, I guess, but fortunately, I, I think even in this case, it didn't look like even much damage was done. So let's yeah, let's he, keep up that. He, uh, he he saw that History Channel special where the Masons are bringing out. Uh, bringing about the end of the world. <laughs> it's it's totally that. Yep. These people don't know that the lodge is comprised of the people. It's the members of the lodge that make the lodge, not the not the building and the furniture. Wow. Well, Touché. you know the thing is, I mean, we're stone masons, right? So doesn't that mean? I mean, you can't really start a stone building on fire. I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> of all the things to use, use water. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that worked really well for Acacia. <laughs> <laughs> okay, topic tonight, Masonic Dads. This is our Father's Day episode, Father's Day being this upcoming Sunday. And yes, we've already done um, Masonic Families, how does, how does your family feel about you joining in an earlier episode. And then and as an extension of that, we also did Masonic Wives, how does your significant other feel about you joining the Masons? Um, and so, yes, this is a lot of the same, but it is different in the sense of um, the direct fatherly influence, both from and now to, that um, <clears throat> we got talking. One of the reasons we have this <clears throat> vi uh, video webcast so late is that we, most of us, Jason Richards excluded, have young children. And... The only time that we can all get together, especially across time zones and everything, is late at night. And so it's a way we can still have the show, uh, but also perform our fatherly duties. So <clears throat> with that, um, let's just give a brief, we don't have to go really descript, but just how, how many kids and, and male or female does, does everyone have? I'll start. I have uh, two young girls and a third girl on the way due, due in August. So I'm... I'm completely outnumbered, and uh, but I love my girls. And I'll, I'll start with Paul, since uh, the Masonic Dads episode really, really was inspired by him. Uh, I have a <clears throat> five-year-old daughter. Although, if you're watching this a little late, she'll be six because her birthday is June 25th, and a two-year-old son. Great, <clears throat> Nick. I have uh, two little boys, uh, three and f uh, ten months. So, so try little that again. Uh, oh. you know, I think your video was a little choppy. Oh, my video's choppy? All right. So I have a, uh, a three-year-old, and I also got a 10-month-old, uh, both boys. And, yeah, they're they're in that terrible whatever stage. I think it's not even terrible twos. I think it's terrible <laughs> five years. It's like, <laughs> God, stop. Yeah. But, well, how about you, buddy? Um, I have a four-year-old named Aiden and a two-year-old named Mason, and they are a lot of fun. They are they love each other, but they show it with <laughs> hugs and fists. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, Jason, tell us about your cat or cats. Cats. <laughs> yes, I am. A, I am not an operative father. I am a operative <laughs> father. Uh, so, so that's what I'm going to be uh, working on uh, tonight. Uh, yes, I have two cats, both girls. Five years old. They poop in the box. It's great. Yeah, I haven't mastered that yet. <laughs> Not me, but also for my kids. <laughs> okay, um, when you talk about Masonic Fathers, um, the first thing that kind of comes to mind is the lineage, right, of people kind of being inspired to join the fraternity because their grandfather, their father, whomever was a Mason. Just a general question. I, I don't know the answer are any of you Lewises in the sense of 
the Masonic definition meaning that you are the son of a Mason that joined the fraternity? I, I would I guess I would be considered technically a Lewis, but mm. my kind of weird. Uh, the picture that that we that we have for our our episode is actually the raising of my father, and so um, my grandfather raised my father, but I had already been a member because my grandfather had signed my petition, and my dad saw how much fun I was having, <clears throat> and he decided to join. So technically, I'm a a Lewis, but you know. It's one of those that I brought my father in. So technically you're a Lewis once removed. Is that how that yeah. works, the ge genealogy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I, in my case, I am... Uh, it's similar to, to Nick. My father is a Mason now, but he is an apprentice. And he joined a year or two after I, I, I was raised. So, so I guess I am a Lewis... Mm -hmm. Cool. A Lewis after the fact, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Post Lewis. Mm -hmm. Post Lewis. <laughs> that leads to the next question: Is um, would you influence your your sons to possibly join? Not not in a recruiting way, obviously, but um, would you extol the virtues of the fraternity uh, as hey, the fraternity hey, came up? Don't say obviously. I can recruit my son. Um, that's true. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, and uh, I making sure I keep my degree work sharp for the next <clears> eighteen <throat> years, so uh, I'm ready to confer all my degrees on him when he's uh, when he goes in. Uh, but I mean, obviously, I'm not really going to force my son to join masonry, but he's going to be around it all his life and see how much I enjoy it. So I hope he uh, wants to be a part of it as much as I do. Yeah. D describe the the recruiting comment you just made. Oh, uh, Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania uh, allows us to, uh, we can ask. And actually, when you had the conversation about, um, I don't know what you call if you called it recruiting or not, uh, but you had a whole episode about that. And uh, I'm the one who tweeted you the, the information that Grand Lodge of Pennsylvania allows us to recruit. We even have a brochure we're allowed to give to someone called You're Invited. So, um, and like I said, in Pennsylvania, I'm more than, more than able to and more than happy to. Cool. Now, is that the same state that has the sunshades? That... Uh, no, the sunshades I don't think are Pennsylvania. Oh, I oh wait, no, you idea. know what? I take that back. I think <laughs> we should... <laughs> so I... disappointed. <laughs> no, I, I, I think the, the new Grandmaster, that is his his gift, is the sunshades. Um, okay. The new Grandmaster came in this year. We are master, Grandmaster served two years. And uh, right in January, you know, he, our Grandmasters take over... December 27th, and in January I started my new job, so I've actually only been to my January state of meeting so far, so I haven't seen too much of this new Grandmasters programs, but mm. I, now that you mention it, I do believe the sunshade is his. Cool. Okay. Nick, I know Juan, would you, would you influence uh, your, your, your kids where appropriate? Jason, I don't know if you want to yeah, real real quick. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, if uh, if I end up having boys when my wife and I decide to start a family, their 18th birthday present will be a petition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's actually a funny story because there's this guy I know who just had a son. Uh, you know, he's got he's got all girls, and he finally had his son. And I said, so uh, so are you going to be kind of influencing your son maybe to I don't know about the Masons he's like oh no problem with that he's already signed his petition <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, uh, so he's ready to go <laughs> I, I I wanted to give Jonathan a petition a pre-signed petition for Pennsylvania but he's got to have a boy first so yeah yeah <laughs> Juan what do you think um well I I think that by by example hopefully that he sees my involvement and how much I enjoy it and I'll try in due time to express to hit, to them what what masonry means to me. And here in Florida, you can at least you can ask, but not ask to join. You can ask if someone has considered joining, and then use that as an opener for a one-time conversation. So I'll try to be wise as to the timing of that if I ever have to. Very cool. You you bring up a good point, Juan, too, about really 
the invitation should be there because you're trying to use the values and morals and virtues of the fraternity in your daily life, so they'll see that in you, right? Hopefully. Which, which is the really the next question that we had kind of lined up, which was, what what pieces of the fraternity and making yourself better, a better person, a better man, has influenced uh, you as a father? Hmm. Well, in in my case, I I focus a lot on, on on the working tools, and I've taught them when they see my ring. I say those are those are puppies' tools. <laughs> so they, they know these are my, my tools. So I think paying attention to, to those things, I, you know, for one, growing in the island of Puerto Rico, we are very passionate and very, you know, hot-tempered. So for me, what was important, or it is important, even an hour ago it was important, to, to keep my passions within new bounds. And that's something I try to focus a lot. Um, I think also that values you know especially virtues and, and 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 moral moral rules let's call them that I find within my personal faith I, I hope that those I'm able to to share with them and so far because of the interest I've my renewed interest in understanding my faith more and delving deep into the esoteric uh, nature of you know my life I think I'm benefiting a lot from trying to apply those things. Mm -hmm. So that's where I've seen some of the some of the influence. I agree. For, How about you? Uh, for me, I uh, um, I've had to learn about time, time and saying no, because those two <laughs> things. If you can't do both of those things, you know, I. I I'm just obsessed with saying no. <laughs> no. It used to be I was an idiot. I'd be like, oh, yeah, 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 I can show up to that meeting. <laughs> you know, it'd be like third meeting out, and my wife is like, you know you have a family at home. I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> now it's like, oh, I want to be around them. So it's like, you know. Yeah, I'd say just um, learning to deal with uh, people from different backgrounds and different temperaments and different different moods uh, you know it, it's it, not everyone in in your lodge has the same background you have not everyone in your lodge has the same level of education you have and frankly there's usually a generation gap with a lot of men in your lodge you know um, I don't know how you guys are but the, the oh, stat yeah. that always was thrown around when I joined was there were more master masons over 80 than there were under 30 um, wow. and I'm hoping we were starting to change that with things like this podcast but you know dealing with, you know, there's a lot of older guys, and Nick says about saying no, and uh, when, John, when you and I first talked about this, I, I told you about finding a balance, and the more I thought about it, it's actually, you want to find the right imbalance, because balance implies 50-50, and it, with young kids, you don't want 50-50 with your lodge, you mm -hmm. want you want more to the family, and it's that saying no, and, and, and just no, picking your spots, and making sure your family comes first. Yep. Really I, I like that. That's I, I like the the word equi equilibrium, and and it, and it makes me think of the visual of keeping something within the line. And I just recently saw a movie, and I'd really enjoyed a documentary called Man on a Wire. Mm. And mm -hmm. if if you haven't seen that movie, I recommend you watch it. I absolutely loved it. Um, but you see, it's about a man, uh, the the one and only man who walked a tightrope between the Twin Towers. It's available on Netflix, so check it out. But anyway, <laughs> just seeing this, seeing this man, uh, the way that he keep he kept his his equilibrium in that in that line, you see how sometimes his limbs, one limb has to you know extend really far, and then it has to contract, and he has to react to to the adjustment so that he can stay within the line. So similarly when we, you know, as we move in our lives, there's going to be times where our attention is going to be very heavily towards the family. So it's almost as we're leaning, but we're still keeping our feet within that straight and narrow uh, line. So I like that visual of, of, of keeping that intact. Very, very true. 
Yeah, so actually that was one anecdote that I was going to bring up too was um, last year, uh, during my year in the East, uh, I actually, uh, we had our, our second daughter born. <laughs> and that was horrible. I do not recommend it. If you're planning on uh, getting in line and do, do all that, make sure that's part of your strategic planning to not have a child <laughs> or another <laughs> child during during your year in the East. Um, because you know, obviously, newborns are, are just so so time craving necessarily, right? They have to be. Um, but oh, it was such a horrible balance, right? Because you you, you had commitments, you had obligations, you had to go to. And oh, it just, it, you know, there were oftentimes it broke my heart to, to leave um, to go take care of other other things. And the other point I'll make, too, it, it's not just the times out at, in the evenings at Lodge, but it was also the planning. As Worshipful Master, you have to keep all the balls in the air to make sure that the Lodge operates. And to, to provide that balance... Very early, I found out that what had to work for, for me specifically was I had to sacrifice sleep. I don't recommend it, but that's what had to happen, that I could spend time, you know, I could get my, my whole job in, I could spend time with my kids, I could spend time with my wife, and then when she was going to bed, I'd start sending emails for, for the lodge. And it worked, because I knew it was gonna, it had an endpoint, right? That I knew that December was was gonna was gonna come and everything was gonna be great. And it is very true what they say. Uh, once once you become a master, you turn around and look, and your year is over. It's very quick, um, but it, it wasn't fun. Um, but what was what was important is exactly what we've all been talking about: is finding the balance, focusing on family. Um, we have a common saying around here that you know, whenever people say, "Oh, well, I got these commitments." Uh, every time I've heard people in this district say family first, no matter what, family first, take care of family, and then, then the Masons will be there, which is good because that's one thing I like about the fraternity is that these are brothers, whether you show up to every possible event or you show up once a year, they will treat you the same, that they, you know, they will welcome you with open arms because everyone understands we all have different life journeys, right? And I just the the adjustment and finding that balance that works for you, that works for your family, that works for your 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 kids, is very very important, I believe. Jason, do we want to start going through the, any questions and comments we got on our Facebook page or on Twitter? Sure. Yes, we actually have a a question on Twitter that doesn't uh, necessarily relate to the tonight, but I think it's one to talk about. Um, you know, he applied to a Prince Hall Lodge through guys at work. Would it be okay to lodges? Um, you know, he's he's not sure if he's going to um, be breaking any rules or or offending people by uh, by say, oh, wait a second, let me try to. So, what do you think? Should should he shop around for lodges or just pick the one that his friends are in? Well, it it honestly kind of depends on his jurisdiction. I'd. Um, <clears throat> yep. if, if you're in a, a, a shall we say, antebellum state, uh, you <laughs> Prince Hall lodges kind of limit your choices of where you're going to go traveling. But if you want to be with your friends and your friends are in that lodge, that's the lodge you should be in. Because, I, again, if, you, if you're in a state where you, there's not recognition and you join the quote-unquote regular blue lodge of that state, now you're not a brother of, of your friends who wanted to get you in the fraternity in the first place. So, I mean, that, to me, would be the heaviest, you know, that would weigh on my mind. Like, what's more important to you, being in a lodge where now you can visit a lodge in all 50 states or being in a lodge with your friends that got you into the fraternity? Mm -hmm. Great. I think it's important to note also that, uh, you know, at least in Virginia, um, if you petition a lodge, that that lodge of that lodge, or they release you. So depending on you try that again, Jason. You're... So if you petition a lodge in Virginia, that that lodge basically owns your petition until you either get your Mason degree or they release you. Anything at that... all? Yeah, I've seen that once where um, 
someone was asking, even when their petition, they were somewhere in the process before I think they even got uh, their entered apprentice degree, that the lodge had to vote to release the petition so that way um, they could apply to a different lodge in a different state, I think, at that point. But you're right, that the, it's kind of locked in, at least in Virginia Virginia rules. But again, it still, it still doesn't say don't shop around until you know, you're know you really into that process. But um, Well, you can still shop around regardless. I mean, if, if you want to check out the one with your friends, go and hang out. If you don't, I mean, I usually tell guys, especially like here in the Metro, we have concurrent jurisdiction with all the lodges. Go, go visit three, four, five, eat dinner with them, see if you like it, you know. Even mm -hmm. if it's ones that have your friends in it, okay. Nothing, lo nothing to lose, really. Mm -hmm. Jason, we have another question on Twitter, I think. <clears throat> well, first, first off, you know, if these guys really are, you know, your your good friends and and good masons, I think, you know, go to them and say, hey, well, you know, just just talking to them, engaging in dialogue with them is is going to be fine as well. Um, on Twitter, we just had another comment from. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Richard Ingman, uh, third generation Master Mason, hopes that uh, his two sons will join the Lodge as well. And special uh, shout out to Brother Paul on the other end of Pennsylvania. It's a big state. It is. That, like, because when you guys were like, oh, we're going to this conference in Pennsylvania, you can come too. And it's closer to you than it is to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And that's all we've got for uh, for social media. Okay, I, I know that uh, we had a couple statements on the the Facebook page as well, but it, it was some good discussion there. Um, I want <clears throat> I wanted to make a a comment about being a father and a mason. Uh, when when I started considering uh, expanding my my family. Even though I had thought about becoming a Mason in the past, it was not in the forefront of my mind, and it started happening in co at the same time as my my friend Victor. We were friends from childhood, and he had a girl, and then we had a boy, so we started having a family at the same time. Well, I joined Masonry, and shortly thereafter, he joined Masonry, and to me, it was very comforting the fact that. We are each other's kids' god uh, godparents, hmm. so I know that you know. God forbid anything were to happen to me uh, and my wife, I not only have the support of a friend, but also the support of a brother. That's cool. You know, so yeah. that that's something that I find very very exciting. Mm -hmm. Not the part of being in an accident or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't happen. Yeah, I, I hey jo Jonathan's my my son's godfather, so yep. I'm right there with you. Yep, that's awesome. Awesome, proud to be actually a brother. Uh, brother in my lodge is the uh, godfather of my my son too. So, that's <laughs> <laughs> uh, kind of cool how that works out. It's a conspiracy. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Well, let's start going around to our final thoughts, comments. And shameless plugs, and I'll reserve Paul for one of the last ones. We'll start with uh, Brother Nick Johnson. Oh, that's me. Final thoughts. Uh, final thoughts. You know, I've been in this uh, this Mason game for, I don't know, eight years, nine years, something like that. A while, almost a decade. And what I've what I've seen is the guys that jump in full hog and have families usually burn out pretty dang fast. So pace yourself. Remember your family is always the first thing that comes uh, that, that should come into your mind. We're charged to do that in, in our lectures, except in Pennsylvania, I'm sure, because your ritual is different. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, I told Jonathan uh, we can do a whole show. Oh, yeah, man, we could. I'd love it. Uh, but, uh, you know, and just, just make sure to keep keep – Keep your passions in due bounds, and that includes your passion for masonry. Uh, my name is Nick Johnson. I blog at uh, millennialfreemason.com. I'm also a mod over at the uh, Freemasonry subreddit, which you can find at reddit.com slash r 
slash Freemasonry. Uh, it's a pretty good place. Um, unfortunately, Masonic Meme Monday has kind of fizzled out, which really is like uh, killing my <laughs> spirit a little bit. But, <laughs> you know, I think uh, John and I and, and Tom will try and keep going forward with it, and one of these days we'll make these guys actually love it, even if they don't <laughs> like it now. Anyway. Just like real masonry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, you, you don't like it now, but don't worry. We've got another pancake breakfast planned. You're going to love it. <laughs> I'll pass it off to Juan. Great. All right. Um, well, I'm I'm glad that, you know, we I have additional brothers out there, including Jason, uh, who, <laughs> you know, our, our parents and our learning, you know, th it, this is one of the few things in life that I find to be uh, uh, disparate from how it should be. If you think a doctor has to study an incredible amount of time because it's incredibly difficult to be a doctor and most every profession, but parenting, it's almost like we just wing it <laughs> and, and we shouldn't. You know, there's a lot of people out there that are very wise that have been parents before. You know, there's a lot of good advice. And Jason, we are writing this stuff for you. you, know, <laughs> you can count on us if you need help in the future. Um, and even though it, it is very challenging, and I'm sure Nick can attest that tonight might have been a very difficult night for us as, as fathers, <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of pleasure involved in it. You know, these kids are amazing and they make us happy, and hopefully we live a straight enough life that they want to be like us, you know, as much as we want to be like them. I blog and I podcast at thewindingstairs.com. Please check it out. And I am working on a secret project, as always. Nice. But this one, <laughs> this one is uh, about the family. So make sure to head over to thewindingstairs.com and sign up for the email because that's how I first will reveal the information. So check it out. Great. And thank you again for the opportunity. And I loved your frozen post, too, by the way. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank very you for the contribution. I like yours, too. <laughs> All right. Mr. No Kids. Mr. No Kids. All right. You know, while, while I don't have any kids per se, my wife is doing a great job of prepping me and training me for the, uh, the eventual reality. And actually, you know, a lot of what she's telling me is stuff that I can uh, put into practice in masonry, specifically when uh, she tells me about 20 times a day, you can't say that to our children. <laughs> so, you know, she's finally beat it into my head enough times that, uh, that you know, I'll, I'll be in Lodge or something. I'll be like, no, I, I can't say that. <laughs> no. So, you know, it's all about keeping your passions within due bounds. Mm -hmm. Something I wanted to plug last week, but I just completely blanked because I have the attention span of a five-year-old. Uh, <laughs> Williamsburg Lodge number six. Uh in Williamsburg, Virginia, is doing a festive board for St. John's Day on uh, on Saturday, June 21. Um, they do this festive board, uh, you know, all the time, and it's going to be a really fantastic event. So if you're down in the Tidewater area of Virginia, please go and check them out. Um, Williamsburg Masonic Lodge number six, AF and AM on Facebook, and check that out because that's going to be an absolutely fantastic event. Great. Uh, as, as far as I'm concerned, go ahead and check out my blog, The Two-Foot Ruler, Masonry in Plain Language. And thank you so much for the likes, links, everything. Um, we uh, TMR has a couple little plans in the, in the works that uh, we will talk to you guys more about uh, in the upcoming weeks. So hold on to your hats because it's going to be a lot of fun. And outside of that, thank you so much, and I'll see you all next week. Great. Brother Paul Chamberlain, past master. Did I get there it right? Go. There you go. Uh, Paul M. Chamberlain sometimes, but the like past master part's right. Uh, the one other note I kind of want to hit on is the way uh, that you can kind of help the balance or imbalance, if you will, is take the mystery out of Freemasonry for your family. And by that I mean if your lodge has an open house, take your family to it. Um, introduce them to as many Masons as you can. Because it's a lot easier for your wife and your kids to accept you're going to lodge if they know, oh, I'm going, oh, tell John I said hi. Oh, is Mr. Jason going to be there? He's so cool with his bow ties. 
you know, stuff like that. If you can take the mystery out so it's not a mysterious building that they've never been in and a group of men they've never met, it makes it a lot easier. Um, Jonathan and I both know a, a Masonic wife that uh, was really upset um, because she didn't know anybody and she hated going to events because she didn't know anybody. Uh, but like my wife, she, she knows a lot of the members of my lodge because they've come to my house. I've been to their house. Um, we have a really good relationship with a, um, brother Jacob Brown, worshipful master of Emmaus Lodge up here in Pennsylvania and his wife. Um, they have two children that are literally the exact same age as our children and we get together a lot and play and that's part of taking the mystery out of Freemasonry for your family. So it, if you guys can do that, it'll really help you along. Um, as far as plug goes, I don't have a blog. I don't have a podcast, but I, I'll be shameless. Uh, please drink Sam Adams beer, Angry Orchard <laughs> cider, and Twisted Tea, because I like being employed. So thank you so much. And um, it's been a pleasure talking to you gentlemen. I, I've known some of you previously, Jason and John. You've both been to my lodge. John, you're one of my best friends. Uh, Nick, like I said, we interact on Twitter. Juan. Uh, sorry you caught up late, so we didn't get to talk much before the show, but it was a pleasure being with you, and I hope to uh, be here again. So thank you. Likewise. Thank you all. Great. All right. Ruark's final thoughts. Dun, dun, dun. You're sitting down, right? <laughs> Gary, Gary. <Yeah. laughs> I'm glad we had this time together. And uh, the, the last thing I'd really say is that another thing that, we really didn't hit on is that 21st century fathers are much more involved fathers than uh, the, the masonry fathers in the past, right? When you had the big boom in the you know, 40s and 50s, you know, they, the housewives had a different role. That there were times where this, you know, the men go out and have their fun, and the women stay home with with the children, right? Nowadays. That balance is shifting, uh, and it's it's because you know we're we're pro progressive in that sense that we want to be part of the family too. We want to be integrated. We want to be involved, and so it, any other extracurricular activity is that can be that more demanding than it even was back then because it was expected that oh you know he's he's out with the Masons and that's okay. It's okay that he's missing his kid's soccer game because he's doing something with the Masons. But now. No, not so much. It's not not really a good excuse anymore. And with that comes, you know, a harder balance, as we we, we talked about this whole episode. But I think Paul had had a great um, a great view of it to say it's really about the perfect imbalance in focusing more on the family and, and working masonry around that. And if you do that, I think you'll you'll have the the best experience both masonically and in your family. The other thing I wanted to mention is we, for those who haven't seen, we do have our website, themasonicroundtable.com, www.themasonicroundtable.com, where we have links to all of our content, Facebook, YouTube, iTunes, Twitter, RSS, and the like. wanted to highlight that we, we do take donations because this is all out of pocket for us. We don't advertise, and anything we, we get, uh, is greatly appreciated and goes directly to our hosting costs. Uh, we have received some donations already, and it is greatly appreciated. Uh, we do thank you for that. And let's see, my other thoughts here were that, as Jason said, we do have some secret projects in the works, but hopefully we should reveal those in the next month or two. So s stay tuned, tell your friends, and with that... Thank you for joining us, and keep searching for more light. Have a good night.